In this video, we're going to walk through the solution to our last practice problem in chapter 10. Um, and this is asking us to calculate the density of aluminum as it crystallizes in a face centered cubic arrangement. And we have a radius of 143 picometers. So I think this is a good problem to attempt after you have uh, tried working through the lab for this um, chapter. The lab will go through the volume of each of the different unit cells that we're focusing on. Um, which I think is a very helpful exercise to go through. And it's, it's broken down into some smaller pieces. Uh, so focusing on this problem, if we want to calculate the density of aluminum, um, we're going to need to know how many aluminum atoms we have in our face-centered cubic um, unit cell. We're going to need to know that unit cell volume. We're also going to need to know the volume of one of those aluminum atoms as well because density is really gonna be equal to the mass over the volume for um, our, our substance. And so we can do that. The density of the unit cell will be the same ratio as the density for the entire um, structure. So what we need to know is the mass of the aluminum atoms inside the unit cell. And we need to then know the volume of the unit cell. So we're going to look at a face-centered cubic. Uh, so the way I like to kind of draw these. So a face-centered cubic is going to have one half of an atom on each face of the six sides of our cube. And it'll have an eighth of an atom on each of the corners. So that's kind of my drawing of that. So if I'm looking at it as a unit cell like this. I'm going to have lattice points on each of these four corners here and on the bottom. And then I'm going to have an atom on each face. It's a little harder to draw in. It really just looks like a mess of green dots right there. Uh, so let's start with figuring out how many of these aluminum atoms we have inside of our unit cell. So um, on my unit cell, on um, each of my corners, right, those will each be an eighth of an atom. And on each face, it'll be half of an atom because it will be shared with two unit cells, whereas each of those corners is shared with eight unit cells. Uh, so I'll have four lattice points on the top and four on the bottom for my corners. So I'll have eight corners. Um, and each of those will be an eighth of an atom. So I'll have one atom. And then I'll have six faces that each have half of an atom. So that'll be three atoms. That'll give me a total of four aluminum atoms inside of my unit cell. Uh, so then with that information, I can use the periodic table to actually get the mass of those four atoms. So I'm gonna start with four atoms. And I'm going to dig deep and remember chemistry 161 and use my dimensional analysis skills. Um, I know that I'm going to try to create a, a strategy here that's going to end up with grams. Um, and I know that if I have, when I end with grams, I should have grams on the top of my last conversion factor. Um, the only thing that I have that'll have a mass unit associated with aluminum would be its molar mass from the periodic table. So I can always find the grams per mole of any substance. Um, I won't be able to actually, I don't want moles in my answer, so I, I have to cancel that. Um, and so now I'm looking at how to go between atoms and moles, and that's going to be Avogadro's number. So this is going to be a two-step um, conversion right here. So for every one mole, of aluminum, I'm going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. It's Avogadro's number. And if I look at my periodic table, I can look up the molar mass of aluminum. It's going to be 26.9815 grams or somewhere close to that for every one mole. So I plug this into my calculator and I'm going to get a mass for my four aluminum atoms. That's going to be 1.792 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. Cool. So that is going to be my piece of my density equation 
right here, it's going to be the mass. So my next step is to figure out what that volume is. So uh, I need the volume not of the atoms inside the unit cell, but rather the volume of the whole unit cell, now that I know the mass of the aluminum that's in it. So I'm going to look at my cube again right here. Um, and since we're looking at a face center cubic, I know that we have a, it's, it's based on a cubic arrangement. So my length and my height and my width are all going to be the same value. A, A, and A. Um, so I, I can't determine, though, what that distance is in terms of the radius of the aluminum atom on the bottom. And I realized I was just pointing at something you couldn't see. So hold on. So when I look right here at any of these faces, um, any of these edges where I know they'll be the same, I, I can't use the radius to determine that length because there is a very important space right here that is um, showing me that those atoms aren't perfectly touching. And that's because this atom in the center is actually spaced those atoms a little bit further apart. So what I'm looking for is a space in this structure where the atoms are touching. And that's gonna be along this diagonal right here. So here, I will have one whole atom and two half or two eighths. And so this, this length right here is going to be equal to four of my aluminum radii. So that's one aluminum radii here. This atom will be two R and then this one right here is another R. So that is gonna help me get the, the length A that I need to know to be able to calculate the volume of this cube. So um, I know, so let's bring this all down here. I know that in general, the volume that I'm looking for is going to be A cubed. Um, and right now, I need to figure out what A is. Um, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's taking us back a ways um, in math. And so I know right now that actually my A and B are equal to one another. So A squared plus A squared equals C squared. And I know that C is equal to 4R. I determined that just from my radius of aluminums, actually my atoms touching. So I can rearrange this into 2A squared is going to be equal to 4R, and that whole term will be squared. Now I'm starting to get somewhere. Um, so I can continue to rearrange this. I'm going to get uh, 16 over 2 r squared is going to be equal to a squared. Rearranging some more and solving this, I'm going to end up with the square root of 8 times the radius is equal to that length a. And I know my radius. My radius was given to me as, if we come back up, 143 picometers. So I'm going to plug that in. Um, I'm actually going to plug this just into my volume equation. So my volume is going to be equal to that square root of 8 times r, which is 143 picometers. And that whole thing is cubed because it'll be a times a times a, length times width times height. Um, so plugging that value in, I am actually going to get my volume of my unit cell, which is 6.6. .6 one six seven times ten to the seventh picometers. All right. Uh, I, I have yet to see density reported in units of grams per picometer. Um, I'm sorry, picometer. Sorry, this is cubed. Picometer cubed. Uh, usually, it's grams per milliliter. All right, if you remember, one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. So I'm going to try to convert this volume into centimeters cubed. Uh, so I'm going to start with my 6.6167 times 10 to the seventh picometers cubed. Uh, and I need a conversion factor that will go from picometers to centimeters. Uh, well, one cubed picometer, ah, picometer cubed 
it's going to be equal to 10 to the negative 10 centimeters cubed. And, and, and it's really important to remember to cube here um, because we know that uh, one picometer is equal to 10 to the negative 10 centimeters. So one picometer cubed is equal to 10 to the negative 10 cubed centimeters cubed. That's because this is cubed. Ah, so now that we have this set up, this is going to equal, I'm going to start rounding here, 6.618 times 10 to the negative 23 centimeters cubed. All right, now we finally have the volume we were looking for to match, oh, wrong color, the volume to match the uh, volume in our density equation. So then let's, let's solve this problem. Um, density is gonna be equal to mass over volume. Like the mass that we calculated is this 1.792 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. So we'll plug that in. And our volume we just calculated to be 6.618 times 10 to the negative 23rd centimeters cubed or milliliters, whatever your preference. Uh, if I plug this into my calculator, I'm gonna end up with a value that is 2.71 grams per centimeter cubed, which matches the density of aluminum. Nicely.